Well, hello there. Um, good evening or good morning, wherever you are. Um, I watched this video last night about 12 o'clock at night. I was lying in bed, and um, after that, I couldn't sleep. I mean, it was three or four hours. I couldn't, I, I couldn't sleep just, just thinking about the, the um, n not only the meaning, but the repercussions that this type of um, messages um, uh, do on, on people, you know. And, and to me, this is the reason why the world is lying in darkness. This is why it's so, um, you know, evil. Uh, because we perverted the gospel and, and we are uh, preaching uh, something else. In other words, we, we are um, serving the uh, beast. You know, we bow down to it and, and, and um, we worship in the beast. It's on Matthew 6.33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The thing is, people use this verse to tell us that we should not be worrying about the current situation with the rising of the peace government and the troubles that are ahead, which I agree. We should not worry as far as our salvation is not at stake here. What's stake, stake here is, is our flesh. <laughs> Meaning... Meaning that we, um, that we keep our heads stuck in the Bible and our knees on the grounds and all our physical needs will be taken care of. And that our job throughout all of these is to go out and preach the gospel to people. Not to tell, tell them about the danger that they are facing, nor to warn them about the evil that is coming their way. In other words, they're saying that um, if we, if we, you know, if we talk about the situation that is going on, we are spreading fear on people and and um, and that uh, um, that's not what God, you know, that that's that's meaning that we are fearful about it and and uh, therefore we're not truly uh, trusting Christ or, or God to, to, to supply all our needs. Yeah? That, in other words, it's like the, uh, the, the bread is going to fall from heaven and uh, the money to pay our rent and, and to feed our kids is, is just going to come down from heaven. It's just, you know, uh, but, but anyways... Uh, I don't know if you see anything wrong with that picture or not, but I do. And I do because God says that if you don't work, you don't eat. And if we don't work, if we don't have a job, and we, if we don't have a means to go out and find a job uh, and work, we're not, we're not going to eat. That's simple. That's what God says. Now, I don't know if you see anything wrong with that picture or not, but I do. First of all, let me highlight this. First of all, we do not seek the kingdom of God. God seeks us and he finds us. So, if you think that God is saying, seek the kingdom of God, um, then you, you, you have a, a free will gospel. You know, it's a gospel of where you do and you work and you seek and you uh, chase after God. And, you know, but, but you know that uh, God has clearly stated throughout the Bible that he finds us. He is the shepherd. We are the sheep, and the sheep, the, 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 the sheep do not find the shepherd. The shepherd finds us. That is the true gospel. But this thing about, you know, our, us seeking and seeking and seeking God, after God, you know, the kingdom of God, that, that, that's the free will gospel. 
Furthermore, furthermore, if we are seeking something and we find it, that is the end of our search. We do not seek something after we find it. And that's just logic. I mean, that, but again, if we, if we see, uh, uh, I mean, if we can't see the, um, you know, don't understand the, uh, the sovereignty of God in all this, the potter, and we are the clay, uh, we're going to be, we're going to be working, seeking after something that, uh, but, but again, if you, if you find something, like let's say I'm looking for something and, and I find it, uh, that's the stop, that's, that's the end of the search, that's the end of uh, me looking for something, you know, seeking after something. And, and you know what, what's amazing is that English is not my first language, but I can understand that. I can understand that um, and that I know it's because God has given it to me and, and, and that's it. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. But their understanding on this verse is that we seek all our lives. We seek and seek and seek. And that should raise a red flag right there because it sounds like works. And of course it is. They immediately get into, uh, get into what they call living a Christian life, which is a, a life of self-sacrifice yeah? and, and works. You know, you're working, seeking, seeking, sacrificing your, yourself um, to God. And we're going to talk about these other gods, you know, that uh, require sacrifice from us. And we're thinking, oh, it's only, you know, when you throw the children into the uh, sacrifice, into the fire or whatever, and you sacrifice to their gods. No, this is the same message that has been um, handed down to us from the beginning. You know, we offer sacrifice to our God. So let's watch a little bit of that video. Christian. After your eyes are open, the work's not done, it's just started. After your eyes are open, the responsibility of the Christian is to go out and do the same thing. You are to be the hands and feet of Christ. You are to put on the full armor of God, which is a picture of Jesus Christ, and you are to go out and actually seek the kingdom of God through his righteousness. Because we, if we are left to our own selves, as a, as a human being, we will fall, and we do fall, often. That's why when we do fall, we have a desire to repent, and then to go back to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me for this. This thorn in my side, this sin that I'm dealing with, I need your help to remove it from me. I can't do it on my own. I cannot do it to myself, do this for myself. Father, I'm asking for you to help me and help those that are listening to this message with whatever thorn is in their side. Sometimes we argue too much as a, in our, as a family. Sometimes we're on our tablets too long or on our cell phones too long. And that's the, that is a, a good picture of what the flesh is like. It's a good pet picture of what we are like, how we are as humans. Leave me alone. Let me do me. You do you. That's a lie from the devil. That's not, that's not reality for a Christian. We have to get out of our comfort zone. We have to live as though today is our last day. And that is not easy to do because this world throws so much confusion at us. The enemy's goal is to confuse and deceive. Just like the very beginning when he deceived Adam and Eve. He was there from the very beginning. He's there right now with you in your home. Deceiving you. Lying to you. Ask for the Lord for wisdom. Ask him to help you with the desires that you have. God will provide. He's okay, um, let me, let, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, this idea of um, me repenting for our, my sins uh, is, is, is a religion. It's a religion of works. 
Uh, and again, I don't know if you saw my last video on, on forgiveness and justification. But the, the Bible doesn't teach forgiveness of sin. It teaches uh, justification of sins. And um, once we are justified by his blood freely, uh, then that's the end of the story for our sins, you know. Uh, and, and I know that this sounds like I'm telling people to go out and murder and kill and, you know, and and rob banks or whatever um, and that we're not to to be good to others and 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 pray to the father ask the father we pray season, without ceasing i mean in, in our spirits we we pray um, as we you know uh, talk to our father in our hearts all day all night without stop this is a communication between our Father and, and our Spirit. And that's what um, praying is and, you know. But, but the thing is they, um, that really their understanding of these verses that we seek all our lives and we seek and seek and, and, and um, uh, they, they, they get, immediately they get into what they call they call the li living the Christian life, which is a life of self-sacrifice and works, and works, and that's that's exactly what um, you know um, the um, Jews were doing uh, <clears throat> when they got mixed with the uh, people of the land, and they, they started worshiping their gods and. Uh, offering sacrifices to their gods uh, and we talk about that a little later down uh, a little later but um, it is a sacrifice of the body to these gods so that he could be pleased and that he can give us grace and grant us all that we need in this life you know um, but anyways let's go on Let's go on. <clears throat> um, is that a worse gospel or what? Uh, and I know that we say that, that, uh, that what he says in his video, uh, people cheered that, is, is, being, is cheered by mo most people in this world. And what I'm saying here is not. People do not like the gospel of grace. They hate it. They reject it. Um, they love works, and 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 we talk. We'll talk about that when when we mention the two the two gods or many many gods that you know God uh, has in the Bible. But there are only two gods: it's just the God of grace and the God of works. You know, you're saved through grace, not of works. And that's it. God of grace and God of works. And um. And I have to live with the fact that the gospel shown me is not popular with the people. But on the contrary, the masses of people hate it. That's just a fact. I mean, and that's what happened to Jesus. That's what happened to, you know, anybody who preaches the true gospel. Uh, Jesus said that we will be rejected and be thrown out of the, the synagogues and even be killed because they think they do God a favor. Now, if we look at the scriptures in, in context, this is what we see. It says, um, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? And we cannot help but immediately think of food and clothing for this flesh, right? However, let's take into account this verse, John 6, 53. And I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, drink his blood, you have no life in you. And then this one. 
Revelations 19.8 And to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So if we're looking or, or you know, seeking after what we shall eat and what we shall drink or, uh, you know, what uh, our clothing is going to be, he says that God will take care of that. He says, don't worry about it, you know, because he provides the meat and the drink so that we uh, could be saved, you know. Jesus said, if you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have eternal life, period. That, don't worry about that, you know. Don't, don't, don't be concerned about that. But you know what? The strange thing, or, or strange, no, is this the wonderful way that God wrote the Bible. You know, he, he, um, he, he wrote the Bible in a way that it appeals to the flesh. And it doesn't really appeal to the spirit. He has to give us the faith of Jesus. Uh, he has to wake us up. He has to give us the spirit so we can understand that this is all spiritual. You know? Um, and so, if we say, if, if he says, you know, don't worry about what we shall eat and what we shall drink, uh, then why he said, you, you know, if you, don't, if you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, you know, Paul said to the lazy people in, in I think it was in Thessalonica, he said, man, there's some people that don't want to eat. They're just lazy. They want to be busy, busy bodies. That's what they reported to him. And he says, well, if you don't eat, you, if you don't work, you don't eat, period. Okay. Furthermore, they tell us that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and all the physical things will be added unto us so that we are not even to concern ourselves with the evil that is going on, which I don't agree with because the fact that God instructed us to work in order to eat, as, as, as I just said in Second Thessalonians 3.10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither shall he eat. And if we don't have a job or means to look for one because of the arbitrary decisions, decisions of some people in this world, I want to try to at least persuade them that the, what they're doing is wrong. And if I see that they are in, in fact wrong about it, you know, I just tell them. Um, is God, is God talking about the physical bread that we eat here? Yes, He is. How do we know that? Because He ordained from that from the beginning. In Genesis 3.19, it says, In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. God ordained that we would till the ground to, to get the bread out of it. Again, if I can't go on and work, how, how am I going to get the bread? Is it going to fall from heaven? Is, is God going to send a, a truck here full of bread? Is he going to pay, you know, is the money going to fall from heaven to pay my rent, to pay uh, the bills? No. He says, you better work. And if you don't have a job because of these evil people that have evil plans in mind, and they want to destroy you, destroy your economy, destroy the uh, country. Just, just only so they can be more powerful and even in control of everything. You got to remember that mankind from the beginning has this idea that they have to control the whole world in order for it to be peace, peace in, on the earth and and to bring the kingdom of God, you know, the kingdom of heaven to earth, you know, that this will turn into a paradise because this, they got this dumb idea that if they are in control of all things, 
then they're going to regulate everything so that it will be smooth and everything will work perfect. That's why, you know, the Bible says that when they say peace and safety, uh, that's when, you know, when they think, okay, we got the whole world, now we're going to bring peace and safety. That's when the destruction is going to come down upon them. Now, let me ask you a, a question. Did God added all these things unto you? Did he added his, the meat and the flesh and, and the blood so that you can drink and, and believe in him and be saved? Did he added all those things? Did he put on, uh, on the, a garment of uh, the white raiment so that you be holy and justified and perfect before him? Yes, yes, he did. Don't worry about that because he does uh, what he says he's going to do. Uh, but anyways, le uh, le let me give you another scripture. Okay, we just read that. It's got, uh, okay, we read that. Uh, now, the next thing is, shall we warn, warn, warn? I don't know if that's the right word, like a warning, you know, warning other people about danger coming their way. I think so. I cannot help if I see a person standing on a railroad knowing, uh, without knowing there's a train coming his or her way and me not telling him or her about it. In fact, if the person cannot move by, by himself or herself, I would try to help him and get him on her of, or her uh, out of harm's way. I mean, I don't even have to be too spiritual to, 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 to do that. I mean, and that's what I keep saying, that the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual and my life is, is being hid with God in Christ, that doesn't mean that I don't love people, that I don't... Uh, want to help people that if I see harm coming their way I'm not going to help them or at least I'm going to tell them you know I don't know if they they are blind and they cannot even move you know but if if, if they are I'm going to help them I'm going to get them out of the way if I can and that doesn't mean shit to God I mean it's not like God is going to say, oh my God, this, this guy is so good. I, I, I'm, I'm going to give him some crowns and stuff like that, rewards. No, he's not. It doesn't mean anything to God, but I'm talking about in this life, in this flesh, you know. Um, uh, I love, I love people and, uh, you know, I, I even love my dog. And if I can help him. I can help my dog, you know, if he's having problems, you know, he's stuck, you know, some one time he stuck his head through through the fence and I, I had to, you know, break the uh, thing so let him out. I mean, that's just nature. That's just, you know, you got to remember that we are in this, uh, in this realm of the knowledge of, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There's good and there's evil in this realm. But that means nothing to God in, in, in the spiritual, spiritual sense, in, in the fact that um, he's pleased with it. And that's, that's what, you know, if people can understand the fact that, that, that we do what we do, if, well, you know, when we do good, like this guy was saying that uh, we, we got to uh, live a good Christian life and, and, and do good, they're, they they are thinking that because of the good that they're doing, God is acknowledged uh, that good and and He's keeping record of it, and He's going to reward them for for that good that they're doing. Paul says, "No, I count all dung uh, for 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 the knowledge of Christ." In other words, everything we do here is. It's dumb for the knowledge of Christ. But anyway, um, you know, we just do what we do, you know, be good people without 
thinking that we're going to get reward, period. That's it. And that's logic. I mean, uh, God only sees, the Father only sees the good that Jesus did. His, his obedience and his sacrifice, you know, because he didn't have to do it, you know. And, and, and he did it because he loved us and he, he wanted to get us out of, you know, uh, save us. So he became the mediator between man and God. He became uh, the lamb that was sacrificed in the, uh, on the altar for, you know, to please the, or to pay for the, uh, the uh, price for sin in the world. Now, I believe, let me highlight that. Now, I believe we can, we can help the person get out of harm's way and also preach the gospel to them. No problem with that. But to say that, we, that all we should do is to preach the gospel to them when they are in danger or confronting a bad situation, I think it's not even human to do. I mean, <laughs> listen to what God says in 1 John 3:17. But whoso hath this world's good and see his brother have need and shut it up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. First we need his need, we meet, we meet, not need, meet, 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 meet. Hang on. We first, first we meet his need and then we preach the gospel to them. And James, James 2, James 2, 6. 15. And you know what's amazing? <laughs> what's amazing is that, that these people preaching these messages or this gospel are the ones that preach that we got to be good, that we, you know, faith without works is dead. So we got to do the works, you know, because if not, if we don't do the works, our faith is, is, is not good. They preach that, but then they go out and do something else, you know. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of food, and any one you, of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be you warm and filled, without you giving them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? I mean, it's, it's even common sense. Again, look at the world, what's going on. I mean, even in the States, the... Um, Unemployment rate is going above 15 percent. I mean, most everybody in the world, especially in these poor countries like ours, the unemployment rate is going to be 50 or 60 percent because all the small businesses are, are, are going broke. And there's no going way they're going to be able to open up and, and get back on their feet. You know, you got to understand that. It's not like in the States. Oh, yeah, in the States, everybody's out there happy taking, receiving these checks from the government and, and comfortable in their, in their couch, you know, preaching this gospel. You know, hey, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry. God is going to provide. Yeah, because they got a check in their hand and, and they probably have a job to go back to because these big, big industries... These big companies, they're not going to have any problems. You know, it's a small business. In, 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 in Colombia, most of it is small little stores in the neighborhoods. Most of them. 90%, uh, you know. And the other ones are, uh, you know, like these big companies. They're uh, controlling everything. But anyway, let me go on. The other thing I want to talk about, okay, I want to talk about something else. The other thing I want to talk about is the door of grace being closed, or they, they call it the end of the church age. The door of grace has been closed from the very beginning to those that were chosen for wrath, the vessels of dishonor. Or do you think that Pharaoh had an open door? Do you think that Cain had an open door? 
I know some of you are probably going to say, yes, they had a chance if they would have done the right thing or something like that. But really, read Romans 9 and then tell me. Tell me, who, who's, who's the potter? Who is the clay? Who hardened the heart, the people's heart? And who softened the people's heart? He opens the door to, to his sheep. In John 10, he says he is the door and the shepherd. And he opens the door to his sheep. All throughout history, he's done it. He is the, par, the, 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 the doorman or, or the door, you know, and he opens the door. It's not us. If we think that, you know, this open door and closed door mm, gospel um, that is, is open and, and now is closed because the, 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 the end of the church age um, is over, you know. Uh, we don't know. I don't know. And I don't know who is the child of God, you know, chosen from the foundation, who God is. is, is um, he's got an open door for him. But, but trust me, the um, vessels of this honor never going to have an open door. They never had an open door. And if you think about the idea of, you know, this open door, it's because you think, well, if, if people have an open door, they can choose. They can choose to go in, which is a lie. It's a worse gospel. It's a worse gospel. People are not going to cho choose to go in. Well, that's what I said right here. The open door message is a free will gospel. And all that are preaching that are free will preachers. Because they think the fact that a door is open, that means we, by our free will, can go in if we choose to. And if it is, if it is closed, then we don't have that choice to make because it is closed anyway. So that's what is open door, closed door, the end of the church a, a, a thing is about. And yeah, I know that the uh, uh, God's program has time. You know, just like the weed. You know, the weed is, is um, planted, the seed is planted and then it grows. And once it's, it, it reaches maturity, it is bundled and, and put into the barn, and the weed, the, 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 the weed is, is burned. So, the, yeah, there are times, but I don't even know, you know, if, if, if the harvest has already happened. I don't know. I think we might be in the barn. Yeah, but, but I'm not going to go tell, him, tell people, no, you don't. I'm not going to preach the gospel to you because uh, the door is closed. You know, we're in the barn, you know, forget about it. You know, you, you, you have no chance. That's crazy. Neither am I going to say, uh, the door is wide open. You, you go ahead and make a decision, you know, whether you're going to walk through it or not. That is the worst gospel. But anyways, uh, I'm going long enough and...